Hello! I have put together this video to explain the first activity in the skeletal muscle physiology lab that some of you will be able to do in class, but others will need to do on your own. Um, I thought instead of having you walk through the simulation, which can be a little hard to understand, I figured I would film what I would expect you to get out of it and help you to get the answers to the exercises that I'm asking you to do. So um, I'm starting here on this page because this is the page that you will get when you log on to your online textbook. I'm not putting that login process up here for obvious reasons, but when you get here, you're going to click on explore the study area. And when you do, you'll get to this screen right here. Now from this screen, you'll be clicking on the Physio X. This is a suite of online simulations. I think we've done a few of these in the past. And you will end up on this screen here. Now for this, per for this activity, we're doing exercise two, skeletal muscle physiology. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through activity one, which talks about the muscle twitch, which is a response to a single action potential in a muscle, and the latent period which is the period between receiving that signal and the actual contraction of a muscle. So we'll talk about what's involved in both of those. So if I skip over here, uh, this final screen is the introduction to that first activity. And at any point in the next few minutes, you may want to pause while we're still on this screen and try to answer questions number numbers one through three in activity one. So I'll, I'll walk you through a few of those. So a, the first definition that we see here is that of a motor unit. And a motor unit is where the nervous and muscular systems connect. We haven't talked a great deal about the role of the nervous system in making muscles contract, but obviously those electrical signals that neurons send are very important for muscles to function properly. So a motor unit, as we can see here, consists of a motor neuron, and we remember that motor neurons send impulses out away from the CNS, generally to a muscle or a gland, and all of the muscle fibers that it innervates, that it controls. And so most of these motor neurons are pretty highly branched in their axons at the end of the neuron, and each of those branches will connect with a specific muscle fiber. Now a muscle fiber is the cell that makes up muscles. So each type of muscle, whether it be skeletal or otherwise, is made up of a series of muscle fibers arranged in different ways. And the web quest that we did this week talks a bit about that. So, like I said before, uh, the muscle twitch that we're gonna be talking about here is a mechanical response, that is some sort of movement, to a single action potential. We talked about action potentials in the nervous system as single nerve impulses that allow neurons to communicate. And that is caused by the influx or inward diffusion of sodium into a neuron. So the same thing will be true here. Sodium is important to allow muscles to contract because that's how we receive the signals or how we send the signals, I should say to get those muscles to contract in the first place. And that electrical stimulus is simply a change in voltage uh, that allows for that transport of sodium to take place. So um, when we're talking about this muscle twitch, we, we can kind of divide it up into three phases. And what I'm doing here is I'm kind of blowing this up and we can see here that the first part is called the latent period. Now you'll notice that this occurs sometime a short number of milliseconds after the stimulus is applied. So here is where we're actually applying an electrical signal. And here is where we're actually generating force, some number of milliseconds after the nerve impulse is actually received. And during this time is when we have all of the things, all of the events that have to occur as part of what we call excitation contraction coupling. So that is the joining of actin to myosin and the preparation for actin to be pulled closer to the middle of the sarcomere. All of that is happening during this very short latent period. Then we have a contraction phase, 
in which force is actually generated as the sarcomeres shorten, and a relaxation phase where those bonds are broken, where actin and myosin detach, and the sarcomere sort of slides out to its normal length. Again, um, I would recommend either backtracking or pausing at some point to get a little information to answer questions one through three, and I'll pause for a second here to help you do that. Okay, so uh, without further ado, um, there is one more thing I want to talk about here. Acetylcholine, um, ACH for short, is the neurotransmitter, the chemical that comes from the nervous system that specifically in this case communicates with muscles. And so all this whole process begins with a signal that is sent with the help of acetylcholine into a muscle fiber. Um, and that is what is actually triggered by the action potential. So let's look at the experiment here. And we'll jump right in. So um, the nice thing about these is that it tells you all the directions. So I'm going to jump right in quickly. And we are going to stimulate this muscle. This is the hamstring muscle of a frog that we would extract from, its, from the back of its legs. Obviously, we're not doing that. So this computer simulation is much less gory. So we're going to stimulate this. And there are electrodes attached to each side, which we're going to use to send an electrical signal to the muscle. This time, we are going to stimulate it at zero volts. That is, we are not going to apply a voltage. So we're just going to kind of poke it with this electrode, but we're not actually going to attach any voltage to it. So we'll see what happens. And we see that there's a flat line. This y-axis, which measures force, doesn't move. So clearly, there is a what we call a threshold stimulus, a stimulus below which we're not actually going to get any sort of force generated by the muscle. And remember, force is generated when the muscle contracts or shortens. So uh, we are going to click on next. We're going to record our data here. And then we're going to move forward. We're going to increase the voltage to three volts. So one, two, three. And then we are going to stimulate the muscle and see what happens. So you'll notice that now we've generated some force. Uh, that force is just over one on our force meter here. And you'll also notice that there is a very short period before which we can actually generate force. That is the latent period that we're going to measure in a moment. So we've already recorded our data. Now we're going to clear this out and we're going to look a little closer. So we're going to increase the voltage to four volts and we're going to see what happens. So you'll notice that the force increases by a little bit when we increase the intensity of the stimulus, which we might expect. There is a ceiling below, above which we won't experience any further increase in force. Um, and we're not really going to reach that stimulus here. We're going to stay pretty well below that. But um, there is a, a voltage above which we wouldn't see any more increase in force. So without further ado, uh, let's go to the next screen here. And again, we do notice that it stays flat for a very short period of time. So now we're going to see what we can actually do here. And the period of time that elapses between the generation of an action potential and the start of muscle tension development in a muscle fiber is that latent period that we're talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and, and check this answer. It is, in fact, correct. And now we're going to measure how long that latent period actually is. So there's going to be a little yellow line here. And we can't see it right now because it's right up against that y-axis. But when I click on measure, and I'm going to go ahead and click on, and it's going to increase by 0.4 milliseconds each time. So now I'm at 1.2. We can start to see that yellow line show up on the screen. And we're out to 2 seconds, 2.4, 2.8. And you'll notice that the force is still zero. So we're looking for the last point at which the force is still zero. That's going to be our latent period. And if we go to 3.2, we'll notice that that is the point at which we start to generate force. So our latent period, we're going to back up one from that, and 2.80 
milliseconds is our latent period. And so we're going to record that. And that 2.8 milliseconds is the time it takes for all of the processes to occur, for calcium to come into the muscle fiber, for actin to bind to myosin, and to get ready to actually contract the muscle. Only when all that happens can we start to contract and then relax that sarcomere. So um, one question that they're going to ask is, as we go, and I'll bump this up to six, actually I'll bump it all the way up to eight. And so what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to clear these tracings, and we're going to stimulate this again. And we're going to figure out if the latent period changes, if it takes longer to generate more voltage. So we stimulated that. You can see the force is quite a bit greater. We're almost at two here, almost double what we started with. But let's see what we can find out about the latent period. So, so we're still at zero. Still at zero. We're going to go up to 2.4, 2.8. And then we can see here, and you can sort of see from the graph, that, again, that latent period is still 2.8 milliseconds. So the duration of the latent period doesn't change. It still takes the same amount of time for all these events to occur to get the muscle ready to contract, to get the sarcomere ready to shorten as it does. Um, and the force may depend on other factors. One factor that we certainly will see here is that voltage changes the amount of force that we can generate. The higher the voltage, at least to a point, the more force we can generate. So that should give you everything you need to answer part one. Again, you may need to backtrack to the beginning to answer questions one through three, and I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.